Hello, so on January the 9th, 2019, a video of a UFO showed up on YouTube. It's shot from a drone flying over the Utah landscape near Beaver, and at one point a white object zips by the camera. Four days after the video dropped, it was posted on my Metabunk forum. That same day, Ivan Horm suggested it's just a bug and created a simple 3D recreation of a one centimeter wide object moving slowly across the field of view. It seemed to fit. And initially I thought this was fine, case closed. But then additional analysis commenced. That next day, January the 14th, somebody posted a video that claimed the object passed behind the distant ridgeline. That meant it traveled over three miles in two seconds. The day after that, January the 15th, Rob Woodus, who posts as Propeller Head, published a video that repeated the ridgeline claim. He did some more analysis that his head shows that parallax proved it was far away at the start and as it moved with the distant mountains, but not with the nearby trees. He said, I believe I've proven it can't be a bug and that it's a sizable craft traveling over 9,000 miles per hour and parallax proves it. A lot of people found this rather compelling. Other people weighed in. On February the 18th, Point Consciousness did some fancy motion tracking analysis, but didn't really use it for anything. He generally agreed with the ridgeline and parallax arguments, and uh, he calculated the likely size and speed. His conclusion was indeterminate, but he went 60% for it being some amazing technology, super fast craft, and more likely an alien craft. Back on Metabunk, I pointed out that the object only vanishes for one frame. And with the noise in the video, this was probably just video compression. It also dropped out earlier. Meanwhile, people started to discuss if it was a bird. Uh, we found a bunch of other similar videos. On February the 18th, Truth Serum published a very long video, the most important part of which was calculating distance and speed from an assumed object size, which seemed to rule out a bird. Then on February 22nd, Jay Lamb raised some objections. Why didn't a 9,000 mile per hour craft ruffle the trees a bit? He suggested a bird might be a better fit. That day on Metabunk, Truth Serum's video had prompted a discussion about the field of view and the frame rate and the calculated size and speed, and we mostly moved towards it being smaller than a bird. On March the 8th, I agreed a bug was likely, but might also be something blowing in the wind, like a seed or a bit of paper. Next month, on March the 23rd, propeller head, Rob Woodus, updated his analysis with a video called Beaver, Utah, Another Way to See It? where he now realized his parallax argument is not conclusive because the object is moving, and nor is the ridgeline argument. Rob starts to look at things like field of view and um, how quickly things of different sides approach the camera. He doesn't do too much math, but he does do a lot of practical experiments, and eventually he concludes that something small floating in the air can't be ruled out. You know, it just floats in the air. Now, am I saying that's what it is? I just think that it's neat that we've looked at this another way and we found another possible explanation. Back on Metabunk, the bug or something small hypothesis remains strong. We also find a few more examples uh, in July and later in October that seem to support it. On September the 18th, the Discovery Channel featured the video on episode seven of Contact, but they didn't really add anything new with their analysis. Then on November 2019, Rob Woodus took a trip to the site of the video and noticed how much stuff was floating in the air. Bugs, seeds, etc. Some of which you can see in his video. We seem to make him move a lot closer to the small object hypothesis. Because it is a wild natural place, you know, there's a lot of stuff in the air. I really think it's possible that the, uh, the Utah video was something that was in the air. And don't have a way to prove that, of course, but uh, I'm glad I came out here to take a look at it myself. And now, two years later, I'm starting to make this video and uh, I asked Rob, Rob, what's your current thinking on what this is? You seem pretty open to it being something in the air, like a bug or a seed, during this trip. What do you think now you've had more time to reflect on it? And he replied, hey Mick, I think it's poplar fluff. And he also noted his mistake with the parallax argument. So. It seems like Ivan's original estimate was correct. It was just a small object close to the camera, a bug or uh, maybe a seed. And now he's shaken out all the objections, its case finally closed. 
But why do people still think this is something? Well, yeah, look at the view count on the videos. The first video was released by Brian Hanley and he got over a million views. I see the next one, which was just the raw footage. Brian then went on to promote Rob's first two videos with stunning new analysis debunks claim the Utah UFO was a bug, it reached 9,000 miles per hour, which was just Rob's first video with a voiceover by Brian. That got over a quarter of a million views. And Rob's video itself got another 60,000. Brian did this with Rob's second video and he got 132,000 videos and he posted some more videos which were just mostly irrelevant points and uh, ridiculously enhanced videos. But even those got thousands of views. Brian didn't publish Rob's third video where he acknowledged his mistakes and embraced the small object hypothesis, but he does have an hour and a half discussion with Rob where they show the fourth one and discuss the topic, kind of dancing around a bit, keeping the door open. But you know, that's really irrelevant because he'd only got 1,700 views. And Rob's last two videos, the correct ones, got around 10,000 views combined, less than 2% of the views of the first two, the incorrect videos. So basically, lots of people have seen the video and the original supposed proof that it was a large, fast moving craft, but hardly anyone has seen the retractions. Hardly anyone has seen the better analysis that shows it's just a small, slow object. The fun theory beats the boring theory, even when the boring theory is correct. So let's finish up with a quick explanation of how you can replicate the analysis yourself. First of all, get the raw footage. The original video is a 1.3 gigabyte file. It's 1080p resolution, it's 60 frames per second, and if you're looking at anything else, you're gonna have problems with the ridgeline obscuration and possibly the speed analysis from counting frames. First, the ridgeline issue. Zoom in and increase the contrast a bit, then go through one frame at a time. The important thing to note is that it only vanishes for one frame of the ridgeline. It's small and there's a lot of noise, so it's quite possible it's just compression dropout, especially as it's just one frame and especially as it drops out earlier. The parallax argument we don't really need to address as it assumes a stationary object and this is moving. Rob made the argument and then quickly dropped it with his third video. Then size and speed. We know the field of view is about 40 degrees. So that's the angle that you can replicate the video with in Google Earth. We know the width of the video is 1920 pixels, which means the focal length of the camera is 1920 divided by 2 divided by tan of 40 over 2 degrees is 2638 pixels. We'll use this in a second. Then we take 10 frames of the video where we can see the object clearly fly in a straight line towards the camera. We measure the height in pixels at the start and the end of this section when it goes from six pixels to 20 pixels. Now, if we knew the actual height, we could use these pixel heights to calculate the distance to the object. It's just the height times the focal length of pixels divided by the height in pixels. Uh, we can do this for both points and get the distance traveled. Divide that by the time, uh, 10 frames, 10 frames being a sixth of a second, and you get the speed. Since we don't know the height, I made a spreadsheet letting me put in different heights and calculating the speed. Uh, we want something that's flying or blowing in the wind, and we know the drone is moving maybe 30 miles per hour, so around that speed works, and it turns out something under one centimeter, around a third of an inch, gives us a speed of around 30 miles per hour. So that fits very well with something small. A bird, would probably be well over 200 miles per hour, which seems unlikely. So I'd go with a bug or a seed. We can also do similar math to calculate the motion perpendicular to the camera's line of sight. And that comes out to be about five miles per hour, like breeze speed. And that's really all there is to it. Is it possible that it was a 4,000 mile per hour craft that made no sonic boom and nobody noticed it? Sure, but a bug fits best. And it's the simplest explanation by far. So let's go with that one first, especially as Rob noted, there's a lot of stuff in the air. Well, thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Thank you.